will stand with us to uh, as I lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I guess now I do roll call. So we'll do that again. Everybody's here again. <laughs> um, upcoming uh, board meetings. We've got June 26, 2017, a CPF workshop uh, at the administration office at 7 p.m. July 10th, 2017, regular meeting, Mentone Elementary, 7 p.m. August 14th, 2017, regular meeting, Mentone Elementary at 7 p.m. and September 11th, 2017, regular meeting, Mentone Elementary, 7 p.m. And we'll move on to Spotlight on the Ballot. Okay, thank you, Todd. We'd like to, at this uh, point during the school board meeting, uh, recognize any new employees that hopefully will be approved by the board here in, in just a few minutes, and I think we have two with us tonight. Rebecca Parker will be recommended as our girls' junior varsity basketball coach. And Chad Patrick will be recommended uh, to you tonight as the boys head varsity basketball coach. So first of all, welcome. Um, Rebecca, what have you been doing since you graduated here a few years ago? Oh, I went to the University of Evansville, uh, played basketball, and got my degree down there in PE and health. And then four years of uh, playing, I wasn't done, and so I went overseas and I played one year in Finland and then one year in Germany of professional basketball, so that was quite the experience and fun. Nice. Um, had an injury, came back and started coaching and coached about five years at the Division One level. And then I thought I was, was ready to move back home, so came back this way and Plymouth had an opening, so I was teaching and coaching over there for the past two years and now I'm here. Happy to be here. Well, we're glad you're here, Rebecca. Thank you. In addition to teaching or in addition to coaching you are teaching at the middle school right correct well, what are you teaching PE and health okay middle school yep. right. so, you know it just seems like a couple of years ago back I remember the boys complaining on the playground about you being in a basketball <laughs> uh, fourth graders you know so uh, we're glad to have you back home that. <laughs> good, good to have you here thank you uh, Chad welcome thank you so are you excited about uh, became, becoming yes. our next head coach so yeah, I'm not sure who's more excited, my son or myself, but we're both on top of it, so right. can't wait. No, we're, we're looking forward to seeing you in, in a new role. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Congratulations. Thanks. Anything either one of you want to share with the board? Just excited to be back home and uh, appreciate the opportunity and ready to work hard for everybody. Yeah, I echo those comments. I thank you very much. Um, looking forward to it. Been around the community for 19 years and I, you know, in the last few years, I've gotten to coach the younger kids a whole lot more, Pee Wee football and basketball and baseball, and got to know a lot more of the families, and it's just an amazing community. You now, with my kids going over here, I found out how great it is, I guess. So I always knew, but when your kids go to school here, and all these people have to step in and help with busy schedules, it's just amazing. Great, great community. Thank you for coming tonight. Appreciate you being here. Um, the second thing we have here tonight is we'd like to recognize the Mental Kindergarten Readiness Center and uh, I'll share with you the information that Megan's provided for us. Um, the Mental Kindergarten Readiness Center has been pursuing past quality certification uh, to be a licensed and certified preschool provider. Past quality certification assures parents that the preschool is providing a safe learning environment, developmentally appropriate curriculum, and certified teachers and assistants that receive professional development on preschool standards. On Thursday, May the 11th, uh, a Raider from Past Quality performed a rating visit at the Mentone Kindergarten Readiness Center. And during this visit, she conducted an interview with the program director, observed the classroom <coughs> elements, and reviewed documentation of training and necessary compliance paperwork. And then based on the results of the visit, uh, the Kindergarten Readiness Center here at Mentone fulfill the standards for level three rating and pass quality. Uh, we do expect to receive a letter from them 
certificate and a cash award of $1,000. Uh, we'll also receive a sign and post in the classrooms. Our plan is to move on to level four, and that's the highest level, correct? Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, where we would have a national early childhood education accreditation that uh, is very difficult to attain. I would like to recognize this evening our program director, Randy Dobbs, the principal here at Mentone, serves in that capacity. Our teachers, Ashley DeVoice and Holly Bradford, and then the assistants in those classrooms, Carrie Thompson and Meredith Adams, and then our PATH Quality Compliance uh, Coordinator and our Director of Special Services, Megan Well, So anything you want to say about that, Megan? It was a process for sure. Lots and lots of compliance paperwork. I didn't really know how to include myself in there because I'm not the director, but I did a lot of the paperwork and you know they had to get a lot of different testing and lots of background checks and of course because it's like certification for preschool. So background checks um, and then there was just a, the rater was really there to look at the curriculum and how the teachers interact with the kids and really make sure that that's at top notch in order to get that level three rating. And, when they spoke with us, um, Randy and I both met with the, the Raider that day, and she could say, she just said wonderful things about our teachers and about the program and how she saw, you know, kids, them asking kids questions in ways that made them think and really process and just high level thinking. And it was, she was really complimentary of the teachers for sure. And then of course the instructional assistants are acting as teachers in those classrooms as well, working right alongside the teacher. So it was a really good visit. Um, they did a great job so my, my role was a lot was just the paperwork and making sure we had everything in order and in line and sending things back and forth between the state and, and us and um, but no it was great I'm glad we, we got that level and she recommended that we definitely move on to get the level four um, so we're nationally accredited as a preschool so, so we'll what additionally that. are we required to obtain level four um, well, there's more paperwork things, um, but you have to maintain like a certain level of three, you know, within the year and then continue that into the next year. They do more visits to, to watch your curriculum in your classroom, um, but it's, you know, it's just more paperwork to file and fill out. And I don't see us have any problem getting there. Um, I just thought, let's enjoy level three for right now. <laughs> and we'll start that process maybe next year. So, yeah, really, and then of course we'll get the cash award, which is also very helpful with the supplies and materials and, and things like that. It's nice that they reward you in that way also. Congratulations to you and also Mr. Dobbs, Mr. Boyce, Ms. Bradford, as well as uh, Carrie and Bert. It's a good thing for our community. Yes, very those good. Two classrooms here. Absolutely, very good. Yeah, you know, now with what Burkett, we're covered there and two here and what we've got after and then the priest uh, the uh, one in the uh, church there at the uh, Akron preschools are pretty well covered in less there less head start yeah I think this school board and the community have recognized the importance of preschool education and really you have um, stepped up done a good job of that so we, lot, we appreciate you folks a lot of us That's all we have. That's all we have. We'll move on to item C, items from the visitors. The school board reserves the right to not provide an immediate response to questions or comments posed during the items from visitors portion of tonight's meeting. Anyone uh, have anything that they'd like to bring to the board? On to approval of the consent agenda. Number one, approved minutes of May 4th, 2017 executive session. Number two, approved minutes of May 8th, 2017 regular meeting. Number three, approve the hiring of the following personnel. Rebecca Parker, physical education teacher at that middle school. Jeff Shriver, driver education coordinator at the high school. Stacy Foxy, 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 uh, instructional assistant at the high school, and Marianne Kromkowski. There you go. Good. Okay. Part time uh, summer custodian at the high school. Number four, approve the following extracurricular assignments Rebecca Parker, girls, JB, <laughs> JB, uh, yeah. 
um, girls JV basketball coach at the high school, Jeff Shriver, assistant football coach at the high school, Kyle Brown, assistant football coach at the high school, Danny Thompson, assistant football coach, high school, Casey Wise, assistant football coach at the high school, Rick Shoemaker, assistant football coach at the high school, Chad Patrick, assistant football coach at the high school, dual role there, going to be busy guy. Chad, uh, next one, Chad Patrick, boys head basketball coach at the high school. Number five, uh, accept the resignations of the following personnel. Michael Ben Dixon, principal, the high school. Doug Heinhold, driver education coordinator, the high school. Lawrence, Lawrence DeGoyce, science teacher at the middle school. Donald Stone, special education teacher, middle school. Justin Branock, physical education teacher at the middle school. Melanie, uh, Melanie? Melanie. Melanie Garling, speech language patho pathologist at, for the school corporation. Elizabeth Ben Dixon, media specialist, Mentone Elementary. Nicole Finn, first grade teacher, Mentone Elementary. Brandon Oswald, custodian at the high school. Bill Patrick, boys varsity basketball coach for the high school. Steve Moriarty, golf coach, middle school. Lynette Shoemaker, aquatic team sponsor for the middle school. And Ryan Adams, fifth grade girls basketball coach at Akron Elementary. Number six, approve the maternity leave for Chaitra Adams, third grade teacher at Akron Elementary. Number seven, approve the out-of-state conferences of the following personnel. Jenny Higgins, speech language pathologist, Akron Elementary. Linda Randall, language arts teacher, middle school and Mallory Eaton, physical education teacher at the middle school. Number eight, approved textbook fees for 2017-18 school year. Number nine, approved revised pay for the high school softball and baseball coaches. And number 10, approved 2017 summer school contracts. Is there any here that you, anything here, fellows, that you'd like to pull out and discuss? I'll make a motion to approve all of them as you've read, one through ten. Brian has made a motion uh, to approve. Do I have a second? A second. Aaron's seconds. Uh, all in favor by saying aye. 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 And opposed? The ayes have. We will go on to approval of claims and payroll. We have one pre-written claim listing this evening. It's dated May the 31st, 2017. It's in the amount of $695,649.53. Our regular claim listing is dated June 12, 2017, in the amount of $187,706.21. And we have two payrolls this evening. The first is dated May 12, 2017 in the amount of $413,600.95. The second is dated May 26, 2017 in the amount of $416,857.92. I submit these claims and payroll for your food. Is there anything in there, fellas, you'd like to pull out and discuss? No. I'll make a motion to Stan makes a motion to accept the claims and payroll. Do I have a second? I second that. Adam seconds. Uh, all in favor by saying aye. 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 And opposed? The ayes out. Uh, on to the financial report. Okay. You have the reconciled bank statement and monthly financial report of funds for May 2017. Uh, in summary, our receipts and disbursements for May 2017 are uh, total receipts for all funds. 
$1,541,062.44. Total disbursements for all funds, $1,612,000. $242.95. Okay, on to old business. Okay, we have an update on the Al Akron Elementary School project. I believe Mr. Beverling is here tonight to present that to us. So, Jeff? Okay, I've reviewed the reports uh, since uh, in the past month. Uh, we've uh, completed the uh, main entry pre uh, precast, and that includes the uh, uh, limestone that came off the old building. You drove by, you've probably seen that. It's looking pretty good. So. Uh, completed casework in Unit D and seized about 75% of this time. We started the floors in uh, Unit C and D. Uh, flooring is carpet and vinyl is about 90% in D uh, and C together. Completed tapings, drywall in units B and C. Uh, continued finish painting in the uh, units B and C. Uh, started the flooring in the kitchen. That's quarry tile, and at this time it's about 90% laid. Uh, get it all down, and then I'll have to uh, grout it. It's an epoxy grout. They should start that probably Wednesday, uh, sometime on Wednesday. Uh, they completed lockers in Unit D, and we started uh, demolition of the existing building. I think we, what wing is that? 46? 49 wing. 49. 49 wing. Yeah. That's uh, basically down in a big pile, or a lot of piles. We started hauling off today out, of, out to uh, east of town there to, uh, uh, what's that guy's name? Chuck Chain. That place Chuck Chain. Chain, yeah. Yeah, Chain. Chain. That's where we're hauling that to. Uh, they've continued uh, in Unit A and demoing the inside of the building there on the east side classrooms and in the middle there. Uh, had a little problem today. I don't know if you've heard or not, but the demo guy got a six inch water main. Kind of flooded the area. <laughs> well, we gotta we check that drainage too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Probably really? wasn't on the meter either, Brian. Right? <laughs> you really hit that. Uh, in the boiler room. He wasn't supposed to go to the boiler room. He was supposed to go over there at the main entrance. And he went over there and, and started, and, and he just knocked the uh, six inch main right off the, there at the ground level. And the water shot about four or five feet in the air. Probably about two or three big swimming pools. Nice day for swimming. <laughs> so he didn't call before he died. Well, it should have been shut off. Um, Marty had to do it in the standing in water about a foot deep, you know. But he got it shut off finally and continued working on it. But. Okay, the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and uh, continued the HVAC work in the boiler room. And continue pulling technology wiring and continue light fixtures in unit C. Uh, D is pretty much complete. Uh, started a mechan mechanical demo in uh, unit A. Uh, we did start to chill her up. It's kind of not fully controlled, but we can operate that. Uh, started uh, plumbing fixtures in unit D. Next four weeks on structure, we'll continue renovating in uh, Unit A. Uh, continue ceiling and grids in B and C. Complete window replacement in Unit A. That's going along real well. Uh, we do have some windows in uh, C that don't have the spandrel glass. That's a kind of a, a glass that you can't see through from the inside, but. <coughs> Looks like a big window from the outside. That's about three fourths of time. Uh, continue prime and finish painting in uh, B and C and D. Uh, I just mentioned the spandrel. They're about 75% there. Uh, completed ceiling tile in unit C and D. 
uh, C is probably uh, 50% this time. And complete removal of uh, existing buildings uh, should be done. They had a written initial schedule was one month. So that should be done in a four week period. Uh, started locker rooms additions and they're on that's on the south side of the gym. We should be starting them as soon as they get that uh, cleared out enough that we can do the uh, undercut and fill in that area and get the, the footings in. So, and a complete electrical changeover that's pulling the power into the unit A so we can feed that area. Uh, continue light fixtures in unit B, continue renovating in A, and continue pulling the technology wiring in B, C, and D. Uh, yeah, you have some photos there. That's kind of the start. Uh, that's the area we're going to need down right away so we can add the uh, south end of uh, the gym. We'll add that on. So that, what you see there is all down now. Uh, this is the uh, east side. Uh, that would be uh, kind of the east side of the gym going around to uh, you see the uh, unit D wing over there. At the present time, that area there is all a stone. They've got the, uh, the stone in for the uh, playground area on the uh, north side there of the um, B area and the east side of uh, the D wing that you see there. So that's just some more work on the east side going on. They had to undercut the area that you see there in sand, uh, probably an average maybe of about two feet undercut, really black, uh, black soils. You think you've probably seen it in sand. Uh, that uh, was checked on a daily basis by uh, an outfit out of Fort Wayne that does the soil engineering. Okay, that is the uh, northwest corner of uh, the existing building where we get right there. There's a couple, uh, a restroom and a shower room in there. That's the northwest corner of that uh, north end of that way. Uh, see, that is some demo work in uh, on the east side. And the spots you see there is probably an easy from removing the uh, tack boards see overhead there and we got there that's you can really tell what that is that's one of those the classrooms in the 87 I think it is one of the classrooms on the east side okay and uh, that's some more of the where the tech boards were removed from the classroom areas when you demo like that, is like metal and stuff separated out and it's just black? Well, uh, it depends how it's kind of tied together with something else. Yeah. He's got about three piles of uh, on the demo one, trying to do block, brick, things uh -huh. like that in one pile. Yeah. And steel in another one and then just trash in another pile. So yeah. Ceilings and whatever. You know, yeah. he, he just can't sort it real good, but he does try yeah. to pick the most of the metal out and put it in a pile. That's probably the uh, west side of uh, the classroom where they've installed new windows. And that's another area where they put new windows in. And that is the cafeteria area. The squares you see there, that's the lighting for that area. It's, a, it's an up, up shine light and up, up and down shine lighting. So it'll be very nice. I've never seen one like that, but that's a pretty nice light. The gym, the plywood around the stage there, that's where the, the hardwood's going to go, right? Yes, the, the face of the stage, that's where uh, on both sides, the uh, gym side and the cafeteria side, it gets hardwood around the uh, opening. Oh, 
That's the uh, gym area where they put in the acoustical ceiling. Uh, the bar joists there that you see, they're about five foot apart. And the acoustical panels are four foot wide. So, uh, and it's, it's about an inch thick material. And uh, so it, it does make a difference. You can tell when you walk in there and say something, you know, it's big that there is a difference in the sound. How do those attach, Jim? There's metal strips on each side that locks it in, and then there's a, a, every four foot, those panels are four foot, uh, four by four. So there's a metal between them. That, uh, it's kind of like ceiling, ceiling tile. So it's supported all the way around. And there's a cooler freezer. And that sh area should be, right now there's no uh, tile, uh, quarry tile on the floor, but uh, they are working on that. I should have them two done, like I say, today or Wednesday, or, or tomorrow, Wednesday. So they will have quarry tile floors inside those? Inside, yes, it goes. It has to be the same level, uh, right straight through the doorway. So. Okay. And that, that's in the office area, I think, with uh, some casework installed on the wall. And there's some new, more new casework. There you see office area, and that's kind of the uh, the main entrance. Uh, as you walk in that main entrance area, you're just kind of looking into the reception area right there. And there is uh, in unit D corridor. The circle you see is now a yellow uh, carpet. Uh, that's where that. Uh, skylight was, if you remember when you walked through there, it's right below the skylight, kind of matches that bulkhead around, matches that, and it's all yellow. So that area is all carpeted at this time. And that's a, that's a hallway. With the carpet, it's, a, it's got some yellow streaks kind of through it, and um, through each tile has a yellow strip through it, kind of blends in with the, the big, yet, uh, big yellow strips. And in the front of every door, or uh, door classroom, has an area maybe four or five foot, what you can see in that picture. Every doorway has a yellow right to, at the entrance, yellow carpet. And I guess looking uh, north through uh, one of the, that hallway to, Schedule-wise, uh, Brandon Field, we're still not two weeks. Uh, he's made some notes here for me. Uh, new windows in the unit in the area A are about 80 percent, about 60 percent complete. Uh, area uh, interior demo on uh, unit A, and he, he's got here that we will have the. Uh, East and West parking, and playground ready, and school park. We got all the stone down in, uh, for the playground to the, the north, and it's just a matter of uh, finishing up some storm drains on the east side that goes up through that east parking lot, and uh, then we can do the uh, east side also. We got the stone in about half of it. But we can't do, don't want to do the rest of it until the more of the building is demoed because it'd be kind of a conflict there. So but they'll be tomorrow. They'll be doing some uh, storm piping up through that area, and uh, it's a, a two-foot uh, reinforced concrete pipe under the parking lot. So and that was just delivered last, I think Thursday or Friday. So I think they're starting tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we should, or next day or two, we'll be pouring the rest of the uh, uh, sidewalk there at the main entrance, along with the steps going down there where the, the uh, Henry Township School in, uh, face of that is. That, that should be completed there. But then we got some retaining walls that kind of wrap around there. That's uh, block type. 
individual blocks laid in the back or uh, back by stone and a, a tile to drain it and uh, that hasn't been started yet but we're getting close to starting that and in the next day or two you will start the demo on the uh, west side and I don't know if there's ever been a decision made on what you want to do with that uh, circle there by the tree um, no, we're meeting the, still working on that. Yeah. I think Adam's supposed to get some cost to us yeah. as well. Yeah, I shouldn't be any uh, shouldn't be any added cost. Okay, should we be able or should we go be doing less uh, area? Uh, take a little more work to try to get the, the uh, stone uh, you know on dirt out of the tree area to protect any of the roots as we can. They're quite concerned about that as we all are, so let's save the tree. <laughs> We've been there. <laughs> Any questions? Before we move away from Akron, I'd like to just publicly I'd thank Mrs. Mrs. Mills and her staff um, here at the end of the year moving out of the 87 wing and getting everything packaged up. And that, that was a tremendous amount of work. And uh, the staff, really pitched in their custodians um, we had high school students that came down and helped just a lot of people were part of that effort so that was that was a lot of work uh, much more than they figured yeah and it's all a lot of stored now in the uh, south end of the gym we give them an area there instead of getting roll offs to put them in two would have never done it with them <laughs> a lot of stuff <laughs> a lot of stuff the other thing I would say is that the areas that are being demolished, um, Mr. Glenn and again the staff there at Akron did a great job of, we've gotten I think about everything out of there that has any value to the public. Um, you know, just about everything. It's, if you go in there, there's not much left. Doors are gone, windows are gone, toilets are gone, partitions and restrooms are gone, bulletin boards, all those kinds of things. If there's any, any use for them in our community, they're out there. So Jim um, Floor's gone too. So. Jim Floor's gone as well. We tried to get everything to people if there's a use for it rather than seeing it go into the, the landfill. So uh, it, it's been, been a lot of work, but uh, the guys have all done a great job. Okay, that's all we have time for. Well, thanks, Thank Jim. Jim. Appreciate it. On to H, uh, new business approval of the TVSC wellness policy. And uh, I'll let you address that, Mr. Conley, if you would, please. Um, Indiana Code requires that uh, school corporations have a wellness policy, wellness committee that's in place. Uh, the areas that we focused on, uh, nutrition education and promotion, uh, child nutrition programs and school meals, nutrition standards, physical activity, uh, physical education, staff wellness and then the evaluation of the plan. Um, we worked as a committee uh, this past year. Uh, just a few of the highlights that we've, that we've brought in. Uh, we want to incorporate uh, some walking clubs in our fourth and fifth grade uh, classrooms and, and buildings. Uh, we want to work with our teachers on providing brain breaks for students uh, as they uh, try to break up the large amounts of instructional time. Uh, increasing the uh, cooperation with uh, the Purdue Extension uh, and uh, with our adult education classes and doing some like cooking classes, something that we want to incorporate. There are, there are several things that we updated within the policy that, that you guys saw, but I wanted to highlight those three. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask Betsy Hines, who is the Community Wellness Co Coordinator uh, for Fort Fulton County, who is uh, on our uh, committee and has helped us tremendously in updating that this year and just talk about some of the things that uh, that you can provide school corporations and what you've helped us with Betsy. Okay so my name is Betsy Hines as I said and I work for the Fulton County Purdue Extension Office. Uh, my position targets the low income 50% or greater SNAP eligible population so the schools I, have to, I work with have to qualify for that need. And I am trying to make the policy systems and environmental changes, um, just improve those for the school systems and for other community organizations so that kids can all have healthy choices available at school. 
because as we know a lot of the kids maybe only eat at school or only eat healthy meals at school so we just want to be able to provide that to them and then also encourage some physical activity throughout the school day so I have just worked with the committee on improving their wellness plan because this year they required all schools that get the lunch the school lunch program to update their policy so I've just been working with the schools to add some new ideas into the classroom and into the school just to help kids get a little more physical activity and make sure they're getting healthy food throughout the day while they are at school. We, we really appreciate someone from the outside looking at it from that lens. It, it, it always helps. Uh, she, she's got a different skill set than we have as educators and just really brought a, brought a great perspective to our group. So really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions on the wellness policy? Do I have a motion to accept the wellness policy? I'll make that motion. Brian makes that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I'll second. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Or by making that motion, you have to be able to run a mile under eight minutes by the next week. Okay. Okay. Okay, <laughs> All right. On to number two. Approved sponsors, sponsorship agreement with Lutheran Health Network, Kosciuszko Community Hospital. Okay, thank you, Ty. Yes, the uh, Tiffany Valley School Corporation and the Lutheran Health Network, Kosciuszko Community Hospital, uh, are entering into a 10-year partnership to help advance wellness-based programs and services throughout the school corporation and the community. Uh, the partnership focuses on all of our students, our staff, and our communities that we serve in two primary areas, mental health and wellness and physical health and wellness. Uh, the partnership allows us priority access to many of the programs and services provided by the Lutheran Health Network. Uh, the term of the agreement is for 10 years, uh, commencing on March 1st, 2017, ending February 28th, 2027. Uh, the agreement uh, is also for an annual payment to Tiffany Valley School Corporation of $25,000 uh, on or about March 1st for a total commitment of $250,000 over the course of the 10-year agreement. Uh, in turn, the school corporation shall place Lutheran Health Network KCH signage in various areas throughout the school corporation, including the entrances to athletic facilities, uh, in athletic materials, on our scoreboards, and in appropriate locations throughout the school system. So I know this is something that you guys are well aware of, but we really couldn't publicly make that announcement until uh, we have the Ag Festival announcement here. I think it would be good to have the board approve that. So we ask you to approve that agreement. Yeah, what a super marriage. That works so awesome. we, we appreciate it. Uh, it's going to be a good thing for our schools as well as the community. Yeah. Do I have a motion to accept the, the Lutheran Health Network. Todd, I'll make that motion. Adam makes that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Aaron seconds. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. We'll move on to the accept, uh, accept donation from Cargill Neutrino Feeds. Right. Uh, requesting your approval tonight to accept a $3,800 donation to Tippecanoe Valley Boomerang Backpacks by Cargill Neutrino Feeds of Mentone. Uh, Mrs. Kim Backus uh, facilitated the donation to help fund our boomerang backpack program, which, as you know, helps supplement food for 150 families in our community each week. Awesome. Good deal. Do I have a motion to approve the Cargill Neutrino Feeds donation? I'll make that motion. Stan makes that motion. Do I have a second? Yeah. I'll second that. Adam seconds. Uh, all in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. On to number four, accept the following grants. Kosciuszko County C Community Foundation Counseling Initiative, 14,000. Kosciuszko County Community Foundation Life Touch Inter Interactive Screen and Laptop, 4,000. Kosciuszko Endowment Youth Services Funding for Motivational Speaker, 1,500. Deco Foundation. Art Deco Initiative tip for the Tippecanoe Valley High School Spray Booth, 7,500. 
United Way of Kosciuszko County, homework help and kinder, kindergarten readiness, $25,000 donation. Do I have a motion to accept these? Make a motion to accept the following grants as you I appreciate that, Brian. Uh, Brian makes that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Aaron seconds that. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The yeah, ayes have it. Number five, discussion of bald cypress tree at the Mentone Elementary School. Hey, before I introduce our guests, just to give you guys a little background on, on this topic, uh, I believe it was the April school board meeting we held here at Mentone. And as we do each year, we, we go to each of the schools, tour the facilities. Um, our maintenance director and custodian will, will take you around the buildings and show you things that um, perhaps need to be addressed through capital projects, whatever. This year here at Mentone, I know we were up on the roof taking a look at the roof. Uh, there was some discussion of uh, some issues we've had with the roof on this school. Uh, the drains plugging, some flooding, um, and the, uh, the culprit was the, the old cypress tree just west of the kindergarten first grade wing there, which is a, a large tree. It's a very dirty tree. It puts off a lot of seeds and so forth at different times of the year. So there was some discussion as to what, what could we do. And, one of the things that we talked about was take the tree down. Um, we had some discussion about that. Uh, we looked at the different options. And uh, I told uh, Mr. Glenn, who was our maintenance director, that if we're considering taking the tree down, we need to do our homework and find out if there is any historical significance to that tree. So I gave him the name of probably half a dozen people here in town, of uh, folks that I thought would know if there was any significance, historical significance there. And we started asking questions, and sure enough, I think it was Linda Cochran that came up with uh, actually this article that gave us the uh, information about the heritage of that tree. So at that point, I uh, told Mr. Glenn, I said, well, we'll not be cutting the tree down. And uh, that's, that's where we are. So I know Mr. Barkley came out and talked with me. Um, I can't, don't remember what date that was, but I assured him the tree was not going anywhere. And that it would be our desire to work with the Mentone Alumni Association to put some kind of a signage or plaque out there that would let people in the community know the history of the tree and how important it is to this community. So that's a little bit of a background as to where we got tonight. I don't know who's going to speak for your group there. Is everybody going to talk or? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, I'm representing the Alumni Association. I am the president of the Alumni Association. And Linda is on the committee. And she's the one that provided the information that I'm sure that you have received from the superintendent. Yesterday was the alumni banquet uh, here at the building. And we are proposing to place a plaque at the tree. We collected money yesterday for that purpose and probably have enough to take care of that. But if we don't, it's not going to cost you anything because the Man Warning Brothers are going to make up the rest of it. We're also proposing that the article that Linda prepared uh, be put on the picture wall down here in the hall that goes past the gymnasium, uh, in addition to the picture of the plaque and the tree and of uh, Dale Kelly. And Dale was the one that was responsible for bringing the tree back from the <coughs> uh, Incidentally, there are two other old cypresses in Kosciuszko County. One on Winona Avenue, more so, and the other one on the road from Leesburg out to Tippecanoe Lake on the south side, about two miles east of Leesburg. They are not native to this area, and uh, the only other major stand in Indiana happens to be down in the toe where the Wabash 
goes into the Ohio River, and that, that area is low and subtropical, and there is a stand of trees there, and that's what we're proposing. We'll, we'll, we'll be glad to work with you on that. Just let us know what we. Pardon? Just let us know what you need from us. We'll be glad okay. to <laughs> We'll probably need somebody to put the block up. <laughs> but I think we can easily do that with your janitor here. At the well, let us let us know when you get ready to do that. We can make okay, sure. I am going down. To, publicize that. I'm going down tomorrow to Rochester to the. Winning it. Winning it. Yeah. And check to see what they can provide and what it's going to cost us. And as soon as I find that, I will contact the, the old treasurer as a, as the alumni association. And we have a new one. The old one decided at 86 she was too old to continue anymore. And as soon as I find that, what that's going to entail, I will order what we need, and we will go ahead and get it, and we will present it to you in the future, and then we can install it. Do you think like a post in the ground, sign on the post? I think so. Next, somewhere uh, in the Somebody said the post probably would cost more than one. Depends on how big the plaque is, yeah. Yeah, depends on how big it is. And we're going to use pretty much the text that you prepared and that you have uh, in the letter that you received. And uh, we will have the full text with pictures of the tree and Mr. Kelly there on the wall. Picture of all the cups. You need to tell what you yeah. have, Tim. Tim has another discovery yes. here. On the, on the same thing with the tree, it's right now, it was planted back in the early 40s, right after World War II. It's approximately 75 years old now. Uh, we found out from the Mrs. Grubbs, social media, the tree was out there. Everybody was commenting. Mrs. Grubbs, told us prior to her death, she's gone now, but uh, also back then they planted sugar maple, walnut tree sugar maple on the south tree lawn just south of the sidewalk. At that time they buried a time capsule. Today that time capsule is still out there somewhere. We'd like to know what's in it. <laughs> yeah. So if the school does want to pursue that, Mr. Yazel, which is the fire chief here, has one of the sophisticated metal detectors that tells you what's in the ground, how deep it is, and all that. He would be interesting in working with the school to try to locate where this time capsule is that was buried back somewhere in the early 40s. Yeah. Well, that's well nice. let's see if we can find it. Yeah, because yeah. right now it could be even yeah. under the pavement, you know, because that cycle <laughs> continues. Right. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that was something else that we found that we didn't know, but Mrs. Grubbs had remembered that. They also planted a time or buried a time capsule out there at the same time they planted the trees. Wow. I am compiling a book to collect the things I have found out and trying to get that together. So it's written down as a historian. You know what happens to what do you, you're made of a historian when you're older, and that's me. So that's what I'm working on, putting it together. So that's the story will go in with the tree. I appreciate well. the information. That's, great. That's, That's really neat to, to know. Yeah. About. It's like the wall. It's it's very much information that the alumni enjoy greatly. You know, the night we was up on the roof looking at the the issue, I guess I didn't really look at the tree. Every now and then a tree needs pruned and yeah. sort of how is this one? Is it in good it's, shape or it, it needs nothing. It needs so it's in good it's shape. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. I guess as a matter of fact, they recommend you never prune a bald cypress. Oh, okay. I mean the shape of it. If yeah, you look at the shape, same it's pyramid shape. If you trim it, it'll just start killing it off. Gotcha. Okay. Good to know. 
and originally, go ahead. I'm sorry. The uh, building that's right there wasn't there when the tree was planted. It's just the kind of a three-story part. And that, building, that building was built in 1967. That way, yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. I remember the tree when I started in school in 1946. So, not anywhere near <laughs> so it puts a date, a date close by it's got to be in the 40s World War II time kind of a, it's probably the oldest around yeah. I know it's older than this number yeah. two right. it's one of the things that you know we teach the kids a lot of history we need to teach them some of the local history so sure. then you know years down the road if this situation comes up again at least now they're going to know that there's a plaque but if we went and met up with mrs grubbs a week before her death to tell us there's a time capsule buried out here also we would probably me, never known that she told me that several years ago but i didn't follow yeah, yeah i didn't I know anything see. about three i grew up a couple of, you know about less than block away no clue that uh -huh. I had that meeting, so it's pretty neat to come out. I'm not sure whether you gentlemen realize that you're not old enough. That's true. <laughs> but, but the old fairgrounds was just over what would have been the road. Park, the parking lot. Right now. Where the parking lot is. Mm -hmm. And when I started the school, three sides that field were animal barns. Which was originally a horse show. Yeah. It, uh, it ended in 1943. Came the Mentone Fair. Right, it was Mentone Fair. The gentleman who was responsible for organizing most of it was uh, Ray Reiner. And the interesting thing about it is, even though it was a carnival fair and so forth, the carnival people did not sell the tickets to the rides. The local people did that. My mother did that for one time. And we were, my grandmother and I were going to go over to the fair on Saturday and so forth. And my mother came home and indicated the fair had closed because Mr. Reiner had a heart attack and died, and that was it. No more fair. Mr. Bus. Mr. Bugs, uh, remember when we tore down the Harrison Township front of the old building? Right. There was a time capsule in there. Uh, there was a time capsule there, and I. Uh, Jack Fisher. Who was the principal here when we Jack Fisher. Jack yes, Jack yes. Fisher. Yes. And he opened that time capsule, and I can recall some of the stuff in it, but it was quite interesting. Do you remember the year, Jim? Uh, what, what year it was? I don't remember what year it was. Yeah, it had been uh, 20 years ago. Was that all I know as far as what was in the time capsule? Oh, I, know well, I don't know. It went away. The oh. items, the items are on the wall that we opened the, the, the uh, So is it older than what we're looking for out on the sidewalk, or is it? No, oh, no, this, this was a different time capsule. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Of the 1930 building, the three story. So that would have been older than what you're Oh, dude, yes. you got a nice place there at Akron. That front entrance there for, at Akron, Jim, the new building where the time capsule goes in that front entrance. Yes. Right there, there's a nice yeah. big area. Yeah. We got a big opening here. Uh, well, that one at Akron? Well, that one's going to be right in. Yeah, it's, uh, the lamps, the lamps, uh, the yeah. 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 This could be a wood box that they buried. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's you know, that's and the trees are several trees that have been, been taken out, out since then. It may be gone. But yeah. You might be able to find contents still in the ground. Yeah. We found one of that in here, and it was a plastic, you know, more of a bottle thing. But 
I'm not, have you seen what's in it yet? Yeah, well, Mrs. Mills was going to open that up. I bought it the end of the year with the kids. Yeah. But that, was, that wasn't that old. That was 87 when that was put in there. Uh -huh. Back in the late 40s, it had to be 40s, um, they found a large bone when they were building the 30 building. This is way back. Mm -hmm. A large 30 building was under construction, and they found a bone with this long, and they sent it to IU Medical, or IU Medical, IU uh, University, Indiana University, and nothing ever came of it. But I have a picture of two of the twins, Paula's twins and another one, holding that bone. Now they would have stopped construction, oh. everything would have been examined. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I have that picture. Wow. Right. It's very interesting, but you wonder what we we would have had to deal with differently with the oh, yeah. So it's part of the school history. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing that to our attention. So, so sure appreciate it. Rep, what are we looking at to alleviate the? Because those are more of a needle and a leaf that tree. Puts well, I mean, it just is going to require someone to go up there frequently. Yeah, we looked, looked at some different ways to, to maybe protect those, those drains. Um, okay. it, it's just going to require somebody to go up there pretty frequently to make sure that they'll be plugged. Because it does at different times. It puts off a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, it pretty well keeps that foliage all year, right? Being yeah. a cypher, something that should. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. it's what I know from that. It's, it just recycles itself. And it's always yeah. something like it's just in the fall. Yeah. yeah. I kind of got a kick out of the, the Facebooks when they said break the leaves. I'm like, y'all don't know that it don't count leaves. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was well, funny. people that saying put funny. gutter guards not knowing that it's a flat roof. Flat gutter guards, <laughs> yeah. not yeah. the other yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, there's screens over the drains. The yeah. the the it's about impossible. About committee did talk to somebody who had talked to the Seacrest, and they are capable of making something. Take care of that problem. That would help. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. That would be me. <laughs> I do all the custom metal work for oh, secrets. Well, Joe, <laughs> well, so maybe talk to you. Okay, you can I didn't know about that. <laughs> just bypass the boss on this one, Tim. It goes yeah. straight. Yeah. Yeah. We just get it scratch your head. Okay. Well, that's it. Uh, if that's the case, and we have no uh, student uh, representatives right now, we are adjourned for the night. Thank you for coming. <laughs>